What would happen if all water on Earth was gone? When people look at pictures of the Earth taken from space, one would notice how a huge part of the planet is covered in blue. It looks like a white jewel in the midst of darkness. It goes without saying that the human race wouldn't last very long in a world without water. The same can be said of all animals and plants as well, since H2O constitutes one of the building blocks necessary for life to thrive. What would happen if all water on Earth was gone? How long would it take? Years? Centuries? Millennia? Would there be any life left on Earth when the pumping was over? What if it happened overnight? Oceanic water makes up 70% of the Earth's surface. How much liquid is that exactly? If we opened a drainage hole about the size of a basketball court, it would take us hundreds of thousands of years to pump out the oceans. They hold over a billion cubic kilometers of water. But what if we had a pump powerful enough to drain all the oceans in a minute? What would happen then? Sure enough, swimmers, sailors, cruise passengers, everyone out on the ocean would feel the effects quickly. Within a second, boaters and swimmers in shallow water would crash into the bottom. They'd get away with a few broken bones. Deep ocean ships wouldn't be so lucky. A titanic-sized liner would hit the bottom in 30 seconds and smash into tiny pieces. The same thing would happen to just about every large ship within the first minute. What about all the sea creatures? You already know the answer. It would literally be raining fish since all the whales, dolphins, and other big aquatic animals curiously exploring the surface would be falling to the ocean floor. As for those already near the bottom, they'd be lucky not to get sucked down the drain along with the water. And that's when the real trouble would begin. Our oceans have two life-supporting roles. First, they regulate global temperatures by absorbing energy from the sun. They push warm tropical waters north and south and circulate cold waters back to the equator. This way, no place on Earth gets too hot or way too cold. Secondly, oceans feed the water cycle, evaporating into the clouds and raining back to Earth. The moment the oceans disappeared, the Earth would turn into a vast desert. Go ahead and throw away your umbrella, since it's never going to rain again. Wait, what about all the lakes and rivers? Can't we get by with those? Well, without the oceans, the world loses 97% of its water. The small amount of liquid left wouldn't be enough to sustain the water cycle. The pools of drinkable water would evaporate pretty fast. In a matter of days, we humans will die out along with some other animals that depend heavily on water for survival. A human being needs at least 64 ounces of water every day to lead a normal and healthy life. In areas that are extremely hot or cold, water requirement of a person per day may go up to a gallon or more. Already in Somalia, insufficient rainfall caused by global warming, water scarcity, and drought are reported to have claimed 110 lives in merely 48 hours. So we can agree that without water, there will be no human life on Earth. Plants would have a few weeks before they started decaying in the dry air. Within a few months, forests would begin massive die-offs. All this dead, dry vegetation would eventually ignite. In a matter of years, most of the world's forests would be burned down. As these huge bonfires sparked all across the planet, the atmosphere would become less and less oxygenated. What about heat buildup? The oceans are the world's greatest carbon sink. Forget the atmosphere, much of the thermal energy trapped in the planet's atmosphere by greenhouse gases gets stored in the world's oceans. In the past century alone, these gigantic bodies of water prevented Earth from warming an absolutely staggering 50 degrees Celsius, not the roughly 1 degree Celsius it experienced in reality. Planets with too much carbon dioxide and methane and not enough water will likely experience a runaway global warming effect. Take Venus, for example. It's geologically very similar to our own world and once upon a time likely had some surface water. This, however, clearly wasn't enough to deal with all the carbon dioxide present in its atmosphere, much of which probably came from ancient and powerful volcanic eruptions. Some of the carbon dioxide was absorbed into the water, but ultimately the planet got too hot and the water boiled off into space. This left Venus without a significant carbon sink other than the atmosphere, so our neighbor kept warming until it reached its current surface temperature of around 462 degrees Celsius. Without any water on Earth, our planet would suffer a similar fate. Don't forget that vegetation has died out too. Without plants to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen through photosynthesis, the world would warm even faster. What about water beneath the Earth? Lest we forget that much of Earth's water doesn't merely reside at the surface. Plenty of it hides underground, within the crust of the tectonic plates that continually drift around, come together, and break apart. Lots of it hides within the mantle, the superheated, churning chunk of the planet that makes up 84% of its volume. Take away that water too, and Earth will become entirely unrecognizable. You see, when a dense planet moves into a less dense one, it sinks or subducts beneath it. As the mantle heats it up, it dehydrates, and the water evaporates off and rises up into the wedge of mantle between the two plates. Through a series of volcanological quirks, this sets up a magmatic plumbing system in the crust that produces explosive volcanoes, like the Cascades along the western United States or Mount Fuji, for example. 
Without water, this process would not take place, and there'd be a lot less volcanoes on Earth. Boo. Weirdly, the process of plate tectonics would itself be in a bit of trouble. One tectonic plate subducts beneath another because it's denser. But say you've got two plates that are composed of the same material. What then? Well, they'd probably make like India and Eurasia, two equally dense continental plates, and strike into each other, forcing much of themselves upwards into the sky and forming the Himalayas. It's thought that, in a case where two tectonic plates are roughly the same density, one only efficiently sinks beneath the other thanks to the weight of the sediment-filled ocean sitting on top of it. Without an ocean present, one of the plates won't be weighed down by an accumulating sediment. It won't be pushed beneath the other and subducted. Instead, the two plates will keep running into each other. So if aliens sucked away all the oceans today, any oceanic plate running into another oceanic plate, or any continental plate coming up against a continental plate, would ultimately smash into each other and form a huge series of mountain ranges. Essentially, then, if Earth did have all its non-biological water stolen, it would rapidly become a superheated desert world full of continent-sized chasms of death, and eventually ridiculously high mountains. Will the Earth ever run out of water? Water is our most precious resource. It underpins all aspects of life. Yet still we hear that there's not enough water and that there's a water crisis threatening our health and environment. What happens when water runs out? How do we ensure water security in the future? In reality, the world won't run out of water. Water does not leave Earth, nor does it come from space. The amount of water the world has is the same amount of water we've always had. However, we could run out of usable water, or at least see a drop to very low reserves. As populations grow, more water is needed to sustain industries, households, and the environment. Not all water can be used for these purposes, and individual countries and states manage provision of potable, safe enough to drink water in different ways. Final words. There is an important saying, water is a necessity for human existence. Without water, there would be no animals or plants, which carry out photosynthesis and release oxygen, and consequently the oxygen content in the atmosphere would go down. Moreover, the absence of oceans would have serious consequences, as they keep the Earth's climate moderate by storing heat inside them. Without large bodies of water, the temperature of sunlit areas and those away from the sunlight would change drastically. The temperature difference between day and night and between summer and winter would be very large. As a result, hurricanes would be a constant occurrence on Earth. If there were still humans at this time, the unbreathable air and scorching temperatures would wipe us out for good. All in all, the Earth would end up just like Venus, cooked. So why not take a few days off and enjoy a little seaside vacation while you can? Well, that's all from this video. What do you think would happen if all the water on Earth was gone? Will we ever run out of water on Earth? Tell us your ideas in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to TechRumor for more thought-provoking tech videos.